Hey guys, I decided to do this. Missy doesn't even know I did this, so hopefully she doesn't get mad for me uh, at me for doing this. But I decided I was gonna go and give you guys a little special here titled "The Quest for the Soul," and I just thought it would be fun for you guys for me to check this out again. Missy doesn't know that I'm even doing this, so I hope you guys don't tattle on me. I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter because she'll know the minute it pops up. But hi, Missy. Yeah, I decided to do this thing. Anyway, please enjoy this season six um, supernatural, super special, whatever you want to call it, titled The Quest for the Soul. And here we go. His soul. Okay. It's gone. Okay. The soul. For centuries, it's been the subject of controversy. Some people are talking about having a heart, and some people are talking about feeling a connection to God. The soul differentiates cool us effects. from others. Uh, the soul is a gift from God. I think something that's in human beings that makes them either moral or not moral is unknowable. C.S. Lewis had a great quote. He said, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. Yeah. And I think that's really a very good summary of the soul. The soul is the essence of everything that we are, mm -hmm. but it continues to exist beyond the body. Yeah. Some people's concept of a soul uh, is strictly a religious concept. When the body dies, the like soul is united with God. Right. The soul is God's image within us. And God invites us to know that deeper. I just know it's, it seems to be universal. It comes up in every culture. I think it's partially um, because it's seems just to come up in cave easier paintings. to think comes that up there's in pop songs possibility. and Shakespeare. And True. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's part of what makes us human. The beginning of man, I guess, is thought about what happens to your soul. Where is it? What is it that makes us different than you know, other animals. I started out uh, as a typical body-soul dualist, grew up in the Catholic Church, and of course that was assumed and taught by everybody that I knew. Yeah, that's but true. But the sciences have moved uh, very uh, strongly in the direction of um, understanding human beings purely in physical terms. Evolved brain. Yeah, that voice. Um, a reasonably well-involved computer that suddenly became self-aware, and then once it became self-aware, said, huh, I'm thinking, and I'm this thing, and I'm a brain inside of a body, and I really feel different and separate from uh, this meat suit that I'm wearing. <laughs> That's where we meat are suit came from. We are poised between something infinite out here and something infinite in here. We're like this meeting point between an inner and an outer world. The Greek philosopher Plato made extensive studies of human thought and proposed some of the earliest theories to define the soul. I believe he started with the question, how can we know about something that is eternally true, like geometry? Uh, circles, a circle is a circle, and mm -hmm. the concept of circle has no beginning or end. What would we have to be in order to be able to have knowledge of eternal entities? And uh, that's where he concluded that the thinking part of us must itself be eternal. So he believed that souls are eternal. Uh, they were not created. They don't come into existence and they don't go out of existence. They just always were. You can also call the form of any living thing its soul. Yeah, I soul think becomes animals, mystical, including us, are uh, probably in the same real house. In a lot but... of ways. Hmm. It's like through the portal of self, you can achieve extraordinary things. I think the idea of souls particularly, I'm sure, is sort of a, a religious uh, notion, your soul rising to heaven, your soul going to hell. Neither the ancient Hebrews nor the first Christians believed in souls. They hmm. believed that they were animated bodies. And then theology formulated around the notion that we are dualistic beings. Had Plato defined the soul, or was his method of thinking Incomplete. We talked a lot, I mean, really ad nauseum about what it meant. When Sam was soulless, not only did he not believe that he was acting irrationally, he actually said that he thought he felt like he behaved more clearly. What's better for the world? What's better to solve this hunt? The importance of the soul was never really understood until this season, as far as characters go. You know, they yeah. didn't know that it was 
it, it was that important to a being and not only to an individual, but important in the grand scheme of things. It's vulnerable, impermanent, but stronger than you know. Anything that's spiritual is above this great dividing line, and everything above it is good, whereas everything below it, including human bodies and animals and rocks and dirt and all of that, is less and less good. When we played Soul with Sam, we were just basically talking about a guy who had all these skills. Or Sam body. Um, to do the job, but didn't have a conscience. Right or wrong didn't come into it for him. It was only what's the most expedient way to get the job done. That's a really scary character. Basically, just got to do a case study and what happens when you put somebody really smart with a really high level of ability in the middle of a situation with no soul. It was, it was sort of a, a show-don't-tell situation for us. Yeah, and it was great. The soul again escaped as an ever-changing mystery. Then, in the early 1600s, as man began to contemplate physics and the discovery of matter, another philosopher began to pursue the understanding of the soul. Descartes is called the father of modern philosophy. One of his most significant contributions was, in fact, essentially reinventing the concept of the soul. Descartes claimed that there are two kinds of substances making up reality. There's extended substance, which is matter, and there's thinking substance, which uh, includes um, minds or souls, and he used, could use those terms interchangeably, and angels. Okay. This examination of Sam and the soul, it just sort of happened to kind of coincide with looking at those sort of assumptions about like Descartes, about like various other like takes on what it is to be a human being, what it is to be um, an aware, sentient point of perception in this universe. The show itself has led us in these directions for a long time, making us look at all of these different ways of treating. It's very true. Death, burial, afterlife, the soul. It's a natural companion of the series. It's fair. In Christian belief, we understand God in three different persons. God who creates, uh, God who reconciles, and then God who sends his spirit to animate us. And when the soul is missing, we're lifeless. Our body is dead. Hmm. Substance or spirit, tangible or intangible, the debate over the human soul continued. Duncan McDougall was a physician, and I remember he wanted this. to test whether or not uh, when a person died, the person's body would become lighter. In other words, was there substance to the soul? And when the soul left the body, could that be measured in some way? His conclusion after six patients Crazy. was that in each case, there had been about 21 grams less on the table after they died. That would yeah. have made sense, that say, back in the first or second century in the West, because there were some philosophers who believed that the soul was actually made out of a very subtle form of matter. I don't take much stock in his research for two reasons. Number one, there have been many, many people who have criticized his research and have uh, said that there are ways to account for the loss of the weight apart from whether or not it was a soul. There's an inevitable settling of your body fluids that would more than account, you know, a loss as small as that from the body. At the same time as you're measuring that 21 gram differential, you're talking about a body that is infused with a variety of different electrical frequencies. The brain generates its own kind of very signature frequency and there's a bunch of electric, like we're full of clocks. What he was trying to look into could not be proven without many, many, many more case studies. Where does it go? Most people believe it moves on to a better place. The story about the digging of the hole and the hearing of the sounds from hell is very real. It did occur in Siberia. To those who discounted the Siberia sounds from hell story, it is true, and I, for one, wish it wasn't. This is Talk from the Heart. My name is Rich Bueller. Welcome to our forecast. Sorry, hour. guys, We're I'm full of tingles. To you and to your hearts and to open calls. Well, I first heard of the story of drilling to hell from my radio audience on my radio talk show. People started calling and asking me about whether or not there really was a time when Soviet scientists had drilled into the Earth's crust in a very, very deep 
hole, had put a microphone down the hole, had heard torment uh, through the microphone, and became concerned that they had, in fact, became fearful, terrified, that they had drilled into hell. A well to hell. Mm. Was this the definitive Creeps evidence the to the existence of out. souls that mankind had been searching for? Is it true? And the lady who answered the phone at his office said, oh, yes, it's true. We've, we've got documentation. We have a letter from a man who says that it really did happen. Was a letter from one of their viewers who lived in Oslo, Norway. I never want to hear that ever again. I called directory assistance for Oslo, Norway, got a phone number, and I said, uh, do you know about this story of the drilling to hell? He said, yeah, I know about that. And I said, do you have any way of knowing whether it's true or not? And he said, no, it's not true. He said, I fabricated part of it. Okay, that's good. Well, it sounded to me like an urban legend. <sighs> Well, no, hell is a state of mind. Or, I mean, we all we do get ourselves into hell at times, but that's so where stupid. What is. I'm willing to believe. Uh, the Earth does not chilling have noise though. Of it. We have a complete section of the Earth understood all the way to the core. I can't find an exact origin for the story. It's just one that got out and started being circulated, and that's what frequently happens with urban legends. You have no idea where it started. You know, these fit the physical nature of all this. Uh, you know, none of us are purporting that we're here for saying this is the way it actually would be. We're, you know, it's all metaphorical. Well, that's what our show does really is say, this is the lore you've heard and then here's our twist on it. Here's here's yeah. the truth under the story that you've heard. You know, we needed what was the water supply that everybody was fighting over. And we decided that it was this well of souls from purgatory. That's In the past, cool. I don't think that they knew how big of a deal it was, how hot of a currency it is. They're essentially, you know, a, a little nuclear power plant that produce so much energy and so much power that when collected, it can be very bad. Uh, if it's in the wrong hands. When Crowley was making a deal with Bobby and he was like, power doesn't come from me, it comes from your soul. We start to see this connection between human souls and let's say the collective human soul. Ah, oh, um, that all makes sense. The operative power in this universe. It's like water rights. Castiel is using souls as uh, ammunition in his war in heaven. And now it's this collection of souls that the angels are going after to get them, give them power for all the, the stuff that's going on in heaven. And of course, Sam and Dean are kind of going, wait, 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 what? It fits into our universe very well, because if they cannot get some form of worship and attention and um, adoration from human intention and the power of human souls and their attention, then they fade from existence. That makes sense. Wow. The season was even deeper than I even realized. It was one of the more challenging things to um, execute. Everyone had strong opinions about the nature of the human soul. Turns out we're a more introspective bunch than we seem. We're a bunch of sort of comic book geeks. The plot and the structure helped to guide us because we had useful that we had these things that we had to fulfill. The series has educated us and even we've educated ourselves as writers and planners of what this series might be as to what the human soul is and what its potential is. And it's gone from being a victim to being potentially the only real power in town. I think with Christians and, and with all religious people, there is a, a, a danger zone because we do believe in the supernatural. And many of us have experienced the supernatural and, and perhaps we've heard stories that we would accept as credible supernatural stories. Gods and stories about everything, because about the moon, about volcanoes, about lightning, because these were all things that humans didn't understand. And um, science has effectively killed those gods one yeah. after another after another, and only one great one remains. Science is not always correct. You've told me that. It's often in error. You've told me that. So how do I not know that there are caverns deep inside the earth with devil figures running around, that there are sounds and screams, there are stories that such is true. When I encounter people that come out and say, I believe there's a hell down there, I say, go for it, enjoy it. And I, I embrace your beliefs. I don't believe it, but that's okay that you do. The bottom line is, is, is nobody here knows what a soul is. It's like asking what love is. One person says, uh, when you get goosebumps. One person says, when you can't live without them. One person says, when it's you true. live without them because you know that's what they want. So there are so many conflicting ideas. Human intention makes miraculous things happen. There are people who live in a universe where magic still exists. Where I was growing up, there were superstitions that you followed. There were things that were inexplicable, but real. 
That was heavy. It made me very um, kind of scared when I heard those screams. Um, here's what I have to say, and I hope y'all don't judge me for this. I grew up Christian. I'll just be as nonspecific as I can be. No, I'll just say it. I grew up Catholic. And Purgatory, which is a big prominent part of this um, last season, is a big part of that belief system. And I also grew up believing in souls. Regardless of what my beliefs are now, I will say I do believe in souls. And I always have. And I do think that on some level, we all kind of choose what we wish to believe. I do believe in souls. I like to look at everything on a scientific level. And I think with the explanation of dimensions, I believe that souls exist on a dimension beyond a third dimension. And I don't mean that like a dimension like you're jumping into another dimension. So this would be one dimension. It's just a single line. It only does this and this is all it does. Two dimensions is when you have an image on a flat piece of paper, so to speak, in this example. And this flattened image can move any direction on this flat piece of paper. When you get to three dimensions, so this black thing, when it rotates, it can rotate in three dimensions because um, there are three dimensions which are equated to X, Y, and Z. X being this direction, Y being vertical, and Z meaning this way. The minute you add the implementation of the Z dimension or the Z axis, um, you have added three dimensions. So that goes with what I'm saying here. So to go beyond that would be 4D and so on. We as human beings that exist or as living creatures, uh, animals included, that exist within this realm of three dimensions can only see it within three dimensions. So if you go to a movie theater that says it's in 4D, it's just a gimmick. It's fun. I love it. But it's literally not possible for us to see in four dimensions. The reason I went down this road, I personally believe that souls exist. And when we potentially see spirits or ghosts or demons or anything else, angels even, they are stepping into our dimension. They're stepping in and showing a part of themselves so that we can see them. Because anything that exists in a dimension beyond our own can show itself to us because it can, it can exist in four dimensions, literally four or th five or so on. We can exist and see within three. So anything that exists like this little image here, if I was to put my finger flat on the paper, this thing that exists within these th these two dimensions are, are suddenly going to just see this little dot show up. It's not going to understand it. It's, it's just going to see, you know, a, a suddenly out of nowhere, this thing just shows up. And it's like, what is this? What is this? And it's a part of my finger in this case. So this thing exceeds that. I believe everything on a religious level can be scientific. Do I believe in hell? To be perfectly honest with you, I do, but mostly out of fear of uncertainty. I, I believe that you have to make your own choices. You have to make your own um, opinions on everything because when you can't prove something, especially on a scientific level, then you can't doubt it either. So agnostically speaking, I believe there is because out of choice, if I choose to not believe it, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, and so I like to believe in all the above, um, including the absence of all of it. So I guess I'm slightly agnostic with a Catholic spin. <laughs> and I like the way that it was worded in this um, special that to each their own, you know, if you feel a certain way, then you're entitled to have those feelings. I love that science exists. I believe that science, I am one of those people that believe that science and religion go hand in hand and they do not need to oppose each other. Oftentimes it makes sense to have them be opposites, but I think they complement each other well. And I think that all science was created on a religious sense and all religion was created on a scientific sense in some degree, just outside of human creation. Hopefully that all made sense.
And this is just my opinion. I thought this was fascinating. I'm glad we got to go down this realm. I'm sorry I gave you that long explanation of my own opinions on this, but it's deep. It's heavy. It's fascinating. You can talk about souls and all that stuff just as long as you could talk about politics or even more interesting time um, and space and all of that. I'm fascinated by this kind of stuff. If this is boring to you, I'm very sorry, but it is very fascinating. It's something I'm very, very passionate about and very interested in. And I'm glad that they addressed it in this season because it was a prominent part of the season. And it's really what made this season interesting for me. And which is why I still, no matter how I felt about the ending, it was my favorite season for that very reason, because it gave you a lot to think about. And I thought that was just so fascinating. The idea of Sam existing without a soul being a different entity than Sam with a soul. And in that regard, I mean, you could also touch base on this with um, with what we do on our um, We Watch Slayerverse shows, a vampire, you know, so on, same same concept. He, he was basically a meat suit with a brain, and so he didn't need a soul to run. And it makes sense. And it also makes sense that he was more efficient because souls, they cloud our decision-making because there's a moral compass associated with the soul that prevents us from making choices that might make us feel bad. You know, guilt directly tied in with soul. Even joy is often tied in with a soul. I think it's fascinating for them to address this and to tell it in their own light the way that they did. And I loved it and I thought it was genius. And it made this season so interesting, like I said. I like that we can talk about this. Now, that being said, going back to this that I just watched here, that whole thing, oh my God, with the, the screaming souls down below, terrified me. I'm, I'm still like, I'm, uh, ugh, and I'm by myself here in the studio and I'm freaking out. It creeps me out to no end. Those noises, they upset me so much. It was nice for them to say that it was fabricated. And I believe that there's not souls into the earth, but the idea, the eeriness of Halloween or how the charm comes from the Hocus Pocus movie, you know, that magic. It's like, we don't, we know that it's fiction, but it also, it gets to us and it eeries us it, or, or watching a monster movie with a werewolf. It's like, we know they're not real, but it scares us. And that's what that did. That scared the crap out of me. I kept my cool on camera and maybe I shouldn't have because this is a reaction channel. I had to keep control because I have no blanket to like hide under. I had nothing to soothe me in that situation. So uh, I didn't react probably as much as I was feeling on the inside. And it was the first time where I really truly went out of my way to not react. I was already scared crapless when I heard that noise. My body, both times they played it, scared Oh my God, I was just shaking internally, just terrified by that sound. And if I heard that and someone told me it was real, I would be mad at them the minute I found out it wasn't. <laughs> it's fascinating. I'm glad that they addressed it. And I'm also glad that this little special touched base on why they did what they did throughout the season. This season was very strong and philosophically genius. I'm glad I watched it scared the crap out of me even though they said it's fake it scared the crap out of me to hear that noise just that noise of sheer agony terrifying terrifying i choose to believe in hell because i don't ever want to go there and if it's not real then that's great but if it is i really hope that i don't ever have to find out <laughs> Anyway, um, to each their own, I see merit in, in everyone's beliefs and non-beliefs. And I think, and we all kind of have to choose for ourselves. To me, a soul is who you are deep down. Your body is just something you wear. It's like clothing. And we wear it for a very short period of time. And then after that, we're just kind of naked. <laughs> and we're our truest selves. Fascinating stuff, truly. Scary. Doesn't have to be. But it is for me. But fascinating. So fascinating. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and watching with me. This was um, a lot of fun to go down this with you. I'm looking forward to season seven. 
Uh, thank you for being patient. I just, I couldn't miss doing this. And I wanted to give us a little buffer because we have so many other shows coming. Um, we're always multi multiplying our content and we're preparing to multiply again. Um, uh, so things are looking bigger than ever. And there's going to be some huge changes over the course of the next few months, over the over the course of this year. And leading into next year, you guys are going to be blown away. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, huge changes. I'm very excited and scared about where things are going. But you guys can look forward to me watching this, the seventh season, the first episode of the seventh season, starting next week with Missy, of course, like always. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Um, and truly, this little special, it really, really was indeed extremely super naturally. Wow, what an episode. That was an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. As usual, as always. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Um, do us a favor. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel and stay notified by clicking that bell down below. And catch us over on Patreon if you'd like for more content, full episodes. Right over there. <laughs>